McLaren gave us something to talk about in the F1 off-season just a couple of weeks before launches and testing take place by revealing a 2050 radical Formula One concept. And I've got Ed Straw and Jake Boxall leg here to talk about it. JBL, I'm going to start with you. We normally give you all kinds of F1 technical projects to look at and to give us the insight on. We probably weren't expecting something like this to have to talk about. And this had a lot more detail in it than what we're used to seeing when teams or, or graphic designers produce these futuristic concepts. You know, we've seen this kind of thing before, but never to the level of detail that we got from McLaren's Applied Technologies Department. What were the key details that stood out for you? I think the key ones were the fact that this is more than just their interpretation of a future car, it's what racing will be like in 2050. They've come up with this whole package of how the tracks are going to be, as well as the car, as well as the level of uh, electronics that people are using, that kind of thing. I think the main thing to take away from it is the fact that it's an all-electric formula. That's what they've come up with. We know that by, I think it's by 2040, that Germany and France, they want to phase out uh, internal combustion engines. Sweden want to do that earlier. I believe it's Costa Rica that are trying to push it as early as 2021. So this is something that is happening. It's tangible. Internal combustion engines are going to be a thing of the past. So they've predicted that it's going to be all electric and I think that's the main takeaway from it. Um, the fact that they also want to create this inductive charging element to it as well. So on the track you have these strips, maybe it might be in the pit lane or it might be out on the track, I don't know. But through having electromagnetic loops in the road, they can charge as they go. You have an option there of charging the car, perhaps it could work in the pit lane or something like that and create sort of a faux pit stop or something like that. Or you could put it out on the track and it would be almost like Formula E's attack mode in some respects. One of the other takeaways is the active aero, the shape-shifting aero is how they've put it. Um, they've described it as like the gills of a shark or something like that and they want to make it so that the side pods sort of come in as, as the car's moving at speed, sort of in a way similar to how DRS works but a little bit different. There's things like self-healing tyres, uh, there's things like increased use of AI which determines the driver's mood from a load of biometric sort of things in driver suit and that sort of thing. and so it reflects their mood outwardly in the car and it's sort of supposed to bring the fans in a little bit, let them know how the driver's feeling, if they're a little bit enraged, and annoyed or feeling quite good about <laughs> uh, how things are going out on track. So there's a lot of interesting features there and uh, obviously I think we can drill down into a few more. Ed, some crazy terminology there being used by JBL, but he's just repeating what McLaren were talking about when they released this. 2050 is still a long way away. How realistic does that make a lot of the things that were being talked about um, when McLaren released their full package of this vision for the F1's future? Well, futurology, as, uh, as it's known, is, uh, is a bit of a fool's errand in a way, but it, it does have a purpose. Is F1 in 2050 going to look like that? No, but there may be some ideas in it that, that could come to fruition. There's a few interesting things. I mean, it's, try it's trying to be an aggregation of areas of technological development, obviously the electrical uh, engine technology and the different battery technologies that can develop over time, things will change there. And I'm, I'm quite interested in some of those biometric elements that you could, you could have. It'd be interesting to know what the, I talked about the, the, uh, the fans of certain drivers move. What about the drivers move? Let's see how angry Sebastian Vettel is when he, uh, when he hits Lewis Hamilton or uh, the 2050 equivalents of the two at Baku under, under the safety car, that kind of thing could be interesting. It's not, it's not supposed to be a blueprint. It is there to showcase a bit of McLaren ingenuity, get McLaren a few headlines. It's good for McLaren Applied Technologies to say these are some of the tech we're involved in. So I think you just have to take it for what it is. It's a fun, interesting aggregation of, of paths of development. But it, it is positive that at least there's some of these ideas around because if you have various long-term visions, you can at least start to think about where you want to get to. So yeah, in real terms, that's not going to be F1 in 2050. But you might find if uh, the equivalents of us in 2050, or maybe us if we're still going uh, and talking on these, uh, on these sofas then, we may say, oh, actually, remember that McLaren, that, that element was in it, so that, that's come through. Jake, some of the things you were rolling through there, things like the, the movable body parts of the car, and I think foldable batteries or something you mentioned as well. How, how much of a step would it be for F1 cars to move towards that? Because an F1 car at the moment is a pretty rigid, solid structure. Obviously, it's designed to crumple in certain ways when it crashes and those sort of things, but suddenly creating, turning solid 
parts of the car and the bodywork into these potentially moving parts. So how far away are we from things like that being considered in the real world? Well, there's things like this being slowly developed for the aeronautical industry now. So although for a, even then it might be a way away in the future, it's something that's possible. Um, so I was looking into this uh, mag piece with Scott Mitchell for this week on this new concept in which we drill down into it. Um, I discovered that there are some companies are looking at this additive treatment for carbon fiber, which sort of pulls it in different directions. It sort of moves the shape of the carbon fiber in reaction to some kind of stimulus or something like that. And yeah, so it's all technology that's usable. And again, like the self-healing tires, it's, um, you know, you look into it and you can find these, what's known as an elastomer, which is sort of like a rubbery polymer, like a plastic sort of thing. And it, it will heal itself. And it's something that can be done. Um, whether we're on the precipice of that technology now, I don't know. Um, it's a little bit hard to say, but it's all things that are very, very tangible. It's all things that are happening now. So it would be great to see that level of technology in 2050. I mean, that's what F1's about, isn't it? It's pushing the boundaries of technology. And I know people like to say, perhaps, you know, maybe it's a little bit too tech heavy, but this is where the driving force of everything you use in everyday life is gonna be. Uh, so Formula E, that's driving the battery. Um, you know, it's getting exponentially more more capacity. Um, and in Formula One, that's pushing automotive industry and other such air engineering areas as well. So it would be fantastic to see. Ed, can we legitimately say that this is more than a PR stunt or is it literally McLaren giving us something to talk about while there's little else to talk about? I suspect that would have probably been top of the list because if it wasn't, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have issued it. But that's not to belittle the work that's been put into it. There's, there's, there's stuff underpinning this there is technology out It's not there. just about the drawings, is it? <clears throat> no, exactly. I mean, well, that's a very important point, actually. We have seen people put out various concept things, chuck it out. That's the kind of the, what you might call the, the easier PR thing. There is, I mean, they and McLaren out, did that before as well. Exactly, yeah, a few years ago. I mean, and they, they put out proper material with this. They talked about the technology. So it's, it's more than that, and it, and it is well worth uh, reading up on it. The, the, the Autosport magazine feature is, is well worth reading to, uh, to get some in-depth understanding of it. And... It's important to remember that technical directors of Formula One teams and those working in them, they will be looking at these new technologies, keeping an eye on things. And I suppose the really interesting thing is to think about, this is what, 2050, 31 years away. So 31 years ago now is what, 88? And you think about all the things that have changed in then, these vastly more intricate cars, semi-automatic gearboxes came in in 89, axis suspension was being dabbled with just before that, but then really came to be an effective tool with, uh, with Williams. All these these technological and material things that, that change in that about 31 years, it's, it's, quite, it's quite fascinating. It's interesting, you can't do it now, but it's quite interesting to think about well, if it's 88 now and we're looking at today's cars as a, as a throw forward, what, what would that look like? And there will be so many of, these, of these, these technologies and these things under the skin that we couldn't even think of now because there's so much work going on. And Formula One's very, very good at seizing on new technologies and prototyping ideas because there's that competitive drive and the need to be quick. So I think Formula One could be quite an interesting test bed budget allowing for, for some of these things.